Now, for our next talk, there's a question. So, is education culture? Now, the next speaker is my friend, my neighbor, and my classmate. We've known each other for a very, very long time. And he's truly an inspirational person. I'd like to introduce Bara al Mukadma. A lot of times, people are sitting together and talking in our society. They seem to be capable of solving a lot of the problems that come through quite naturally. Why do people not line up in public services? It doesn't make sense. Why do people not drive properly in the roads of Riyadh, you know? It doesn't make sense. Why don't companies provide services? It doesn't make sense. So why do we not get it? It really doesn't make sense. Disclaimer, culture can do marvels. They can make us do things and go through things that are quite difficult to explain. Education, what do you think? Well, you see, we tend to like to classify, classically classify students into two. And let me, as a student, take the chance to talk about students. There are the good students and there are the bad students. And in many times, teachers would focus on trying to make the bad student a good student. But then in many other times, some teachers think that it's not really possible to change someone. It's what this person is. So, education. Let us go through two stories, shall we? In grade eight mathematics, one student raises his hand right before the exam. It's a review session. Sir, can you please explain this? I don't understand it. Don't worry, it is not coming in the exam. <laughs> and that same student, that same student in another class in the same week, say in English class, the teacher keep saying on and on, stop it, sit down, respect the classroom. And the student thinks, if not says actually, why are you angry? And a lot of us thought that. So, is school equivalent to education? A question that really needs an answer. Is the culture of education related to the culture of teachers? Is it fair to really keep pointing at teachers and saying teachers are having a problem in teaching? You see some of the bad students who actually happen to have a lot of talents outside of the class, well, doesn't that make them skillful people? Doesn't that make them people who are capable of achieving something? Say a good photographer. Say a person who can act properly. Say a person who can talk. Say a person who can use the computer. Say a person who has any kind of the multiple talents that almost every one of our students has. Or is it our culture that really doesn't care about education? Or is it our culture that really tells us we should be educated, you should do well in class? Either ways, those students who seem to be achieving outside of the classrooms are students who are pushed, they're motivated. Schools are supposed to push you and motivate you. Schools are supposed to do that I mean, classically, theoretically, in definition, these students are pushed by the society because they want their position, because it's cool to do so between their peers, or maybe because their family would like it if, you know, my son is doing this and that, it's very good. Or maybe for personal achievement, I want to feel content. I want to feel that, you know, I'm doing something. And so, what about schools? I mean. School um, technically can be defined as a process because the way schools are done is multiple different schools can be in different locations at the same time. One school can have different campuses. Schools in Africa don't exactly have buildings. So school is the process of being educated formally in courses and grades for achieving, giving people and children the necessary skills 
and I do like to marvel upon the skills. I pulled this definition from different dictionaries and modified it, but it did not change the meaning. To have the necessary skills to produce, to be productive. So if you think about it, those students will grow up and will be producing. These students will be the people in the future who are working and doing things, including teachers or whoever professionals who will be teaching more students. And so, this involves an ongoing circle of production and education, production and education, which seems to be the classic thing that is happening. So, from the two examples that I've given um, in the previous slide, you might be capable of thinking that, yeah, I think we have a defect in our schools. The question is then, why do we keep painting them very beautifully and say to our children, you know, the school is very good for you. You will have friends, you will do a lot of things, it's very good, you should go. Especially when they're still afraid of going or in grade two and three when they don't want to go anymore. So why do we keep lying to our children? Or is it lying to ourselves and which is worse? Do we know that our schools have defects? I think so, yes. So why do we still send people to schools? When I asked this question before in a meeting, one of the people sitting wanted to punch me in the face. I mean, we were planning a course in drama and one of the people asked me, are you crazy? You wanna teach and you don't wanna teach? It's a culture. We think that because my daddy went to school, I should go to school. We think because everyone thinks if I don't go to school, I am illiterate, you should go to school. We think that because, you know, son, if you go to school, it's very good. You know, you'll become a doctor or engineer. It's, it's really good for your future. So probably because we take schooling as a process, as something that is coming in our culture, that um, it seems like common knowledge. By saying we take it as a process, it's common knowledge. It's accepted. Education itself can be defined thus. And so if you think about culture, trying to redefine it. It's really a set of things that we do, uh, written here, behaviors, uh, relationships, laws, common knowledge, common beliefs. And let me just back out a little bit. Tell me about society. Because the thing that really matters is what's happening. Are we a successful society? Society itself depends on the culture that we have. Society depends on our relations, on our actions, on our behaviors. This is what makes the society. It's the interactions between us. And what about civilization? Some people tell me, well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Civilization really talks about the characteristics that make the society more important in relation to other societies. Or, you know, gives it something that they can produce better, something they can be better proud of. Say like religious education in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, um, Arabic education. Um, sciences in the United States, technological uh, and um, manual labor in f the far east of Asia. So before I go on, disclaimer, we have a lot of beautiful people who are doing a lot of beautiful things in our society. What I'm going to say now should not depress you. You see, in every s culture and society, there are some defects and I think our defects are quite malignant. We should try to deal with them. I like to think about it as what I call virtual institutionalization. Let me start with the school because we are comfortable with schools and we've been talking about it. You have a student. This student is not exactly interested but he has to be there because his father told him to be there because you should be there. And he doesn't exactly like his teacher and his teacher is, you know, doesn't exactly want to teach especially in our public schools, and this is not the rule, but we have to address things that are happening, and we have to confess to their existence. So you do not have a student who wants to pursue a career in education, but it happens that um, I will apply, and whatever I get is good. If I don't get anything, I will go in education or army. And then you get someone who is forced into education and then becomes a worse teacher. Let us continue. That worst teacher will go to school. He will not be able to teach properly. The student who is sitting there will hate his class even more. And the teacher this time, unlike the first one, actually knows the student doesn't like him because he felt that before. 
And then the student hates the education career rather than not wanting to go there or putting it, but then again, might be forced into it. Might be forced into it very subjectively on the grading system that we put, which is not necessarily the thing that defines which person is good or bad. Not necessarily means that you have to go in the last thing in the list and teaching should not be. What does this do? Where does this lead us? Before I explain that, there is something that we should understand, which is really striking for someone who looks at us from afar. We seem to be taking a lot of things for granted, especially with all the good things that we have in this country and in this region as a whole. We take things for granted. What that means is the student, a lot of them, especially people who entered university, will take taking their job for granted. And the people who are in companies are taking it for granted. And once you have a building that says it's a company, then it's for granted. Oh, we have companies, we're producing things, and it's for granted. So when you don't have the proper teaching, what that happens is we're producing people who are not qualified enough. When we're producing people who are not qualified enough, that means when you go to the task force, when you're working, you're dependent on other people. And if you are dependent on other people, um, and you don't exactly have a good educational culture, then you might be forced into bringing people from outside, pouring buckets of money to try to make things go by building huge things, by relying on technology, which sometimes we do not know how to use properly, and then we have products. These products are a bit lower in quality because we didn't supervise them directly, because we didn't know what are the criteria. And we didn't supervise the people who are, whom we are dependent on and we brought from outside or are from us, but we don't have people who are in their administrations to supervise properly. And because the newer generation is still taking it for granted, we're getting even worse people in the next generation. What that do there is makes us have more dependence and then lower quality products and so on. What does that mean? Well, you see, that enforces the culture that I will get my job. You don't know my father. I will get the job. It's not a problem. I am here just to take my degree. And what that does, that means that jobs are guaranteed because if they're not, man, there are going to be problems in the society. How did my son not go into a job? You know, I paid so much money on him. And that, ne that means that there is a need for an alternative source of production. And that alternative source of production leads to more wastage of resources. Sometimes we cannot even depend on others to produce in our own companies, in our buildings, our beautiful um, buildings and institutions and committees and so on and so forth. We import goods, including education. And what that means? that reinforces the whole thing and causes us to be even more dependent because now we have developed the culture that, well, I am importing everything. That means I cannot do anything. What are you talking about? You want me to change our culture? We're not going to do that. We're just going to talk about it. So do we have real education? We should confess to the difficulty, but with the difficulty, with the hardness and with the sour taste of this truth. We know, we just don't want to talk about it. But when you think about it, and think about the implications that will happen, you might say, we have problems, but we're not really bad now. You're not bad now, but in the future you might be. So we keep lying to ourselves. We keep saying, no, 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 oh, come on, look, uh, we have a lot of things. A culture is made or destroyed by its articulate voices. And we do seem to have a problem. A lot of the people who become successful somewhat, because our standard has decreased. A person who can be defined as successful, not necessarily successful. He might be just doing his job, but because everyone else's standard is low, he thinks I'm the best person. And then they start basking and enjoying their glamour, and then they become influential. And they talk to people about, you know, oh, we have a lot of good things. And I do want you to look at our magazines, especially magazines that are made by corporates. We have the best thing in that. We have the best thing in this. We have, and at least 50% of us know that that's not true. So our culture can indeed be destroyed by the articulate voice in us. So I do want to call for a change in our culture. So I'd ask people, the wise ones, the decision makers, the educators, the education staff, the sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, everyone, people of influence, those people of glamour, all of you, once you're in a position, please use it properly. If you've made a mistake, don't let it happen in the next generation. 
But I'm not here for that. I just want you to understand a really simple idea. It's not about how much money we throw. It is not about how much we pretend to know. And it's not about whether or not we get a job. It's about whether we are satisfied really or not. Whether we're producing something to compete or not. This is a diagrammatic illustration of the um, Holy Mosque in Medina, which is the Prophet's Mosque or Masjid al Nabawi in Arabic. Why am I bringing this picture? Because they're in the middle. That's what it was back then. Right now, it's this. Shall we go back? The big area is this. But what we have now, we have a school actually. It has two libraries as well. One of them has really rare books. The other one is in, in the roof. It's really big. It brings people who are qualified in religious education and in social education. We are producing a lot of great people, and the kingdom is known to produce good Arabic speakers and good religious scholars. But you know, if you are content with that, then you should go back to the Red Square, which was just a really small building that didn't have a proper roof and had sand in the floor. It produced thousands of better scholars. So is it a culture, or is it how big and fancy our institutions are? I think what educates us is our cultural attitude towards how we view everything ahead. I think it's not about the degree you get, but rather to use the tool, which is education, that you have to succeed in the future. Education is a tool. Once you have a PhD, a, a doctorate of philosophy means I can now search for knowledge alone. That means it start, you start your journey of learning things that others don't know and contribute. When you are graduated, you have to contribute. Culture educates. Thank you.